thought for the day, brothers and sisters, today I was reading in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 17, where in verse 11, it speaks about how an evil person seeks after rebellion, goes rebellious. The Bible tells us much about rebellion, started in the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 3, when Adam and Eve sinned and rebelled against God's authority. And that's how rebellion is, brothers and sisters, when we rebel, we rebel against authority. Romans chapter 13, verses 1 and 2, the Bible tells us that all authority is given to us from God. And when we rebel against authority, we're rebelling basically against God. When it comes to government officials, we're told in Daniel chapter 2, verse 21, that all authority is taken down and raised up by God. Whether it be government officials, parents over a child, uh, supervisors over their workers at work. When we rebel against authority, brothers and sisters, we're actually rebelling against God. I have two daughters. They were beautiful, gorgeous girls, physically. They still are. But theologians used to say that babies in the eyes of God are vipers in diapers. You can read in Psalm 51, verse 5, Psalm 58, verse 3, where the Bible basically says that the wicked go astray from the womb. They speak lies from the time they were conceived in their mother's womb. That's hard for us to understand, but this is what God's word says. And as time goes on, that rebellion, that deceitful heart is wicked all the time. Genesis chapter 8, verse 21 tells us that, that the intentions of man's heart by nature is wicked all the time. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9 tells us that the heart of man is deceitful and desperately wicked. A lot of people say, well, God knows my heart. But that's the problem. It's not the answer. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior himself, said in Mark chapter 7, verses 21 to 23, what lays in the heart of a person by nature, and it's not pretty. The way to get away from rebellion, brothers and sisters, is to abstain from evil. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22 tells us that. Charles Hatton Spurgeon, who's often called what's called the Prince of Preachers, he was born in 1834, died in 1892. He often would say that if we eat the grapes of Sodom, it's not too long before we drink the wine of Gomorrah. A little leaven leavens the whole lump, brothers and sisters. That's why we have to get rid of sin really quick. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 and 7, the scriptures tells us that leaven leavens the whole lump of bread. Leaven was a little something put inside of a bread dough, and when it was baked, it would make it grow and grow and grow. That's how sin is. If it's not dealt with, it continues to grow. Tsunamis, tidal waves out in the ocean, in the ocean that you see on TV at times, starts often with just a little ripple effect miles and miles outside in the ocean. It just continues to grow. In Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 15, the Bible tells us that one fox can destroy a whole vineyard. And it's the same way with sin, brothers and sisters. If we sin one time and we do not confess it to the Lord, it can cascade into more and more sin and permeate. With that said, I also wanted to share really briefly in Proverbs chapter 17, another verse in verse 17, where it says that a brother loves at all times, a friend is someone who is born for adversity, um, a person who really loves you, brothers and sisters, is someone who will love you through thick and thin, all the time, unconditionally. In 1986, Janet Jackson, the singer, uh, the sister of the late singer Michael Jackson, wrote a song, sang a song called, What Have You Done For Me Lately? That is how we, by nature, describe love. It's like a feeling, an emotion we have, a pity pat fireworks that go on in our, inside of our mind when we kiss somebody or when somebody does something for us. We, we reflect on somebody's loving us by what they do for us. That is not what the Bible tells us that we are to do. We are told in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 4 to the beginning of verse 8 what love is. Love is not what other people could do for us. Love is what we do for them. It's sacrificial. It's patient. It's kind. It's not thinking of its own needs and desires to be met. 
It's always thinking of the other person first. You often hear me say that JOY, J-O-Y, is an acronym. Jesus, others, yourself. We're told in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, to seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and everything else shall be added unto us. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 to 4, the Apostle Paul tells us that if we are to have the mind of Christ, we are to think of others more than ourselves. My brothers and sisters, we live in a day where, by nature, and there's nothing new under the sun, it's going on since the beginning of time, but it seems to be getting worse and worse, where people just think about themselves, how they feel, what they want to do, they want to dis destroy somebody else's property, it's their right, they're entitled, everything is me, myself, and I. I often say that the trinity of evil, like the trinity of good is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the trinity of evil is me, myself, and I. The middle letter in sin, the middle letter in pride, is I. Often when people are very proud, they're only thinking about themselves. But we're told in scriptures that 1 Corinthians 15 verse 31 tells us that we are to die to self. We are to crucify the old self, as Romans chapter 6, verses 6 and 11 tells us. That we no longer live for ourselves, as Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 says. But now we live because Christ is in us and we reflect who he is. Look at the life of Jesus Christ. Did he live to please himself? I don't think so. I mean, you look at his life. He was born in a manger. He had to be rushed down to Egypt when he was two years old because Herod tried to kill him. He lived in the fields, he had nowhere to lay his head. He said the foxes have holes and the birds have nests, but he had nowhere to lay his head. He had followers and friends, so-called followers and friends who, dis who left him in his, in his toughest time in his life, who, who uh, uh, denied that they knew him. And he died on a cross. The, the hardest kind of death was crucifixion. He was buried in a rented tomb, not even his own tomb, but he did that for us. He sacrificed himself for us. That's what love is, giving. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It is more better to give than to receive, Jesus said in Acts chapter 20, verse 35. God bless you all today, my brothers and sisters. Let us learn not to rebel against authority, but respect it. And let us learn to truly love others, not so much by what they could do for us, but how we can reflect Christ in their lives, through our life. Take care. God bless you.